Hello, Hello. everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody who is out there in the universe having a glorious, glorious Thursday. Welcome to the premiere of our Wheel yeah. of Time campaign. Huzzah! Today, we have some fabulous people joining us. And thank you for resubscribing, Wizard. You thank are glorious. You. You've been subbing for five months. That's when we started. Five months. Just five months ago. So exciting. Thank you. There is... So today, we've got some amazing guests from us, for us, from our stream team rolling together um, on his channel, The Fourth Culture. We have Romji. Why don't you tell hey. us about yourself, Ramji, before you spin the wheel? Hey, um, my name is Ramji. I am the Dungeon Master and host, and also uh, sometimes producer and general bottle washer of a stream named Fourth Culture. Um, we are a Singapore-based stream. We do uh, Dungeons and Dragons on Monday, and we do uh, Vampire the Masquerade, a new campaign that's now on Thursdays, Singapore by night. Uh, I have a great group of players out here. Uh, you can get me somewhere. I don't know if there are links or stuff, but if not, then it's the Fourth Culture. We're on Twitch, and so our details are all over the internet. Enjoy! Yay! Thank you very much, Ramji! And now, we have, from Party of Two RPG, Haley and Weston. No. Yeah, we are Party of Two. We are a, a duet, a duo from, um, oh my gosh, I'm super nervous all of a sudden. Um, but I'm Haley, this is Weston. We are a married couple and we do duet streams on Twitch under Party of Two RPG. We do lots of different types like uh, Pathfinder and D&D. &D, and we are really, really excited to be here getting to play like together instead of one person being a DM. <laughs> yes. Fabulous. I love it. And Haley has been a guest on our channel before when we did Two Bards Building a Tavern. <laughs> and we sang a little song. Did we ever finish that? <laughs> I love it. Well, welcome both of you. Super excited to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time. And we have a few fabulous sponsors for our glorious session today. We've got Souls Rolls, who is a wonderful part of the community that does all kinds of fabulous stuff for a lot of people out there. He is an incredible resource for people that are looking to help level up their D&D &D business or just helping to sort of organize that whole thought process, transitioning this from a hobby into something more. Um, I did a session with him on Monday and in an hour we managed to sort of <laughs> create a plan of action for the next like two years. So <laughs> that is delightful. Um, uh, he's got a wonderful Twitter account and go check out his link tree, especially his web page. It is awesome, full of really great blogs, fantastic stuff. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you for being our sponsor, Soul. Um, you make me happy just as a human being, and I'm so glad that we could work together like this. And with that, oh, and I I'm, think... I'm Lando, and you know me from this channel, so... All right, yes. You don't need to... Stand it. No one, no one wants to talk to you. Yeah, I got to. I'm an asshole. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. And um, uh, just just a little note, Lando. It looks like Callista and Gahard have their names. Low mech stop. Oh, one sec. <laughs> but yeah. Well, that is being fixed. Right before your very eyes. Yep. Magic. Are you all ready to start an adventure in the world of the Wheel of Time? Oh. 
I hope so. Sorry, did I just cut out? No, you're good. Nope. Okay, all right. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> We're just seeing it in front of your eyes. All right, like that. It's time now to set the mood. The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the Third Age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose above the great mountainous spine of the world. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings in the wheel of time. But it was a beginning. The wind gently disturbed a mountaintop dock, its chains still lingering in the crisp wind a testament to the breaking. It careened down the slopes, tripping over a rare pass through the lower peaks and lifting fallen leaves in its eddies. It cooled the brow of a merchant's driver, steadily making his way to the trading town of Fal Gorfan. And just before crashing into the tall walls of that growing hamlet, the wind plays with the edge of a cloak that seems to shift and change as it moves. A fan cloth cloak. A warder's cloak. Kalista and Evan you stand before the walls of Fal Gorfan, having been summoned by a sister, Ayas Sedai, to help investigate what is going on in the north. Tell me, how are your travels and what do you see? Well, today? Yes. The uh, north is uh, not so wonderful to look at. You forget this is where I am from, the north. Yeah, the borderlands are. I have not been here before. It will be a bit of an education for you, I'm sure. But. town is in need, and while it may not be our normal accommodations, you will, of course, be fine. Of course. As we will head into town now and uh, begin to find the city center and the tavern uh, or place that seems to have the most um, activity. Were we given any indication on how we were supposed to meet up with our Aes Sedai? She did let you know the tavern that you were supposed to go to. Lando, do you want to show people? Yep. Foul. What was the name of the tavern again? The tavern is the Crooked Hair. Okay. The walls before you are thick and sturdy, as are the walls of every town in the north. While Prolicon attacks are not common below the northernmost towns, they do happen occasionally. You are here during the day, but you know that every single brazier will be lit throughout the night to ensure that the Shadow Walkers cannot trace into town by bending the light to their will. A long bridge, easily fortified and defended, extends across a river. 
You travel slowly there to enter the town. Several guards see you, instantly recognizing the color-shifting cloak of a warder and the ageless face of an Aes Sedai without any need to look at the ring on your finger. How do you treat them? With a nod, I look at both of or all of the guards that are around, but with complete confidence and understanding, I will be let through, as my warder will be as well, and not be questioned or stopped for any reason. <laughs> Forward through uh, the guards, unless for some reason they feel the need to stop us. We'll continue forward. And Evan, uh, Evan just stands behind, letting her take lead and being her backup, as usual. Are your faces exposed? Yes. Or yes. Have hoods? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because your faces are exposed um, and you are not hiding anything, they allow you to step through into the small town. When you enter, you see the bustle of activity. It is obviously a market day. You can smell the animals, the vegetables, the foods, the mulled wine being sold here. Where are you heading to first? Did I? There's... It has been a long journey. I would like to get settled as quickly as possible so let's head straight to the crooked hair and get adjusted to um, our accommodations of course and we head towards um the crooked hair i what is the city well it's not a city is the this little hamlet is it the city center kind of sparsely populated or is like what time of day is it that we're here? It's actually very, in the north, it is very densely populated because all walls have to, all towns have to have walls. So in order to stave Thank off attack you. from dark friends and fiends of all kinds coming out of the blight. So the taller buildings, essentially there are apartments that are built into the walls. So, and the city center is a little open. So the taverns are all, with apartments above them, are all sort of around the edges, as are the homes of the more elite. The ones, they literally are upper class as they live on the higher part of the walls. Literally upper. Yeah. Uh, as I look around, uh, Evan, of course, is going to be looking around for anyone that appears threatening. Um, what type of people do I see around me? Um, you see uh, all kinds of people. And everyone looks at least a little bit threatening. In this area of the world, every single person is taught to defend themselves. Every man, woman, and child knows how to take down a dark spawn. Um, and they are not scared to do so. Unless it seems to be completely overpowering. If you are looking for particular individuals of note, you do see one. There is a man standing atop the battlements as you enter. His armor is a little grander than the others, but still obviously battle-worn. It is not pristine. He, is, he knows how to use the sword and the polearm that he carries. He eyes everyone as they come through the gate, but he's, his gaze seems to linger on the two of you as though trying to figure out why an Aes Sedai would show up in their little town. I will look up at him and see if I can make eye contact. He makes eye contact with you, and he gives you a curt nod. Of course, nod back, put my hand on my sword, give a slight, respective warrior bow, and then turn back to my Sedai. 
Do you when continue I... town? Yes, we'll continue in to find um, the crooked hair. And I do take note of the little exchange that did just happen. Good, good. And then uh, we'll continue forward to the crooked hair. Yes. Tell me, as you approach, what does this tavern look like? Why, we see a nice edifice with a uh, well, uh, well-worn, like uh, rod handles, and it looks like a place that has been used quite often, um, but it is kept very nice. It is a area that looks to be something that people gather at often. Um, so it is not a, a shady or scary place for us to go. It's, it seems to be fairly bright and beautiful and we're able to go in uh, without any real problem. Uh, so I hop off my horse Dad. and do, I do look around to find a place where I can tie her off. There are plenty of places in front of the tavern for that. You will also notice that next to the tavern, tavern there is a stable. So you will be able to stable your horses for as long as you need. Um, you do see that the tavern while there are bars on the windows, the windows themselves are huge and beautifully done. Obviously, this is a very well-established tavern, um, meaning that it will actually have rooms that would suit an Aes Sedai, someone of your stature, which is probably why um, your Aes Sedai friend chosen mm -hmm. oh my goodness well while we're t talking about like, well-used taverns welcome carney sideshow <laughs> we just got rated with 34 people oh, oh, thank you. You. Oh, thank you. you missed the opening speech but if you watch the vod it's one of the first things and thank you for your follow weather desktop you get a little wink from court on your shirt do wink and yay! Uh, I'm so happy to have you all. There. Hi, Carney. Hi, Sylvie. You guys are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, they are also part of our stream team. And thank you so much, Danielle, for the bits. That is glorious. Every little bit that you guys throw at us helps us keep the lights on over here. It helps us keep telling fabulous stories like today's Wheel of Time adventure. Oh, For those of you not familiar with the Wheel of Time, it is a creation of Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, one of the most epic and most beautiful fantasy series that's ever been written. Oh, yeah. There is going to be a television show coming out about it on Amazon in November, which is why we're doing this. We are going to go through the next seven episodes, do all kinds of fabulous things for you. Um, then that Thursday, we will end the episode. And the next day, we will be doing a watch party for yeah. the premiere. So welcome. I realized I forgot to reveal the title, which I was holding back on. But welcome to The Wheel of Time, The Rise of the Black Aja. You're not allowed to talk about them. <laughs> that's that's illegal. That's they illegal. don't exist. They don't exist. That's right. Did done. I? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Pixie. Yay! Welcome, Phoenix Dice. You guys are amazing. Oh, uh, ooh, Gahard. It looks like you just got a plus two to your next roll. So oh, thank you, Danielle. That's glorious. Um, for everybody who is here, there is a way for you to interact. There are several ways for you to interact, to change the story, to do fabulous things. One, we've got our channel points. Just by watching, you earn channel points, which are called ally points here, because we are allies. Um, some of us are, are just, you know, an ally. Uh, you know, neurodivergent or LGBTQ or people of color, depending on who you are on the channel. Um, uh, but we are also allies to all of the other people. So... Um, thank you for that. You can do all kinds of things there, like helping them out. You can give them haste. You can also learn secrets about things. 
I'll tell you secrets. Ooh, that's gonna be oh. helpful in this campaign, especially. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and if you um, if you have a couple extra dollars just tossing around in your pocket, you can spend them on bits. And bits can actually be used to alter things like Daniel just through a hundred bits, giving a plus two to one of our players. In addition yeah. to that, you can get advantage, do all kinds of stuff, up to and including creating a whole environmental effect in the scene, which will alter things dramatically. Those have been nuts. So feel free to toss all of those things. And if you would like to subscribe, we love having subscribers. Yay! And with that, Let's enter the tavern. Back to you, Callista and Evan. So Evan is going to put his hand on the, the shoulder of uh, his sedai and let me enter first. You to the Go right ahead. And I will open the door, look around to, again... See, I, I'm constantly on lookout for who might be of of danger. Then turn back and give a, a nod. In this in this tavern, you don't see anyone of note, but I'm very curious. What does it look like to see a tavern in this trading town? This town that converges on four trade routes. Tarv the Isle Waste. Fal Moran, and all of the other northern countries. Who's here? So here you see, um, generally it's kind of split into two little, two kind of groups. You get your merchants who have kind of all gathered together to kind of network and talk trade and different things. And then all your kind of guards have kind of gotten all together to trade stories. So you've kind of got a little bit of a split room like, in front of you. Like a middle school dance. Kind of, yes. <laughs> The guards don't want to go over there and talk and have their, you know, uh, swap stories of their <laughs> adventures, the things they fought, the dark, the Trollocs that they've, you know, supposedly fought. And the merchants are all over there trying to just network and see who they can make a quick sell to. These things didn't quite sell as well as I thought. I've got some extra. You want to take them? And so they're all trying to network over in the other side uh, of the tables. You see amongst the merchants, one who is dressed in beautiful finery. And the other merchants at the table seem to be giving him deference. I, of course, will turn to uh, Callista. Just kind of indicate the individual there. Um, oh my god, first of all, Somebody just, a fabulous anonymous gifter just gave us a whole bunch of subs. So thank you, Core Gamer, for your sub. Ooh. Thank you, anonymous gifter. And apparently we have started a high, a high train. train. So this is the time if you are going to donate something, if you're going to do bits, if you're going to do a sub, anything like that, this is the time to do it because the higher we get the hype train, the more fabulous emotes anybody that participates actually gets. So... <laughs> Jump on the yeah. hype train. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask Callista, um, does he... Well, thank you, Ramji. You can give yourself a plus two if you want. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, wait a second. Is that how we're doing this? No, can I... Okay, here we go. Not, not intentionally, but now, now I know we can stack the deck this way. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> Use your channel points. The oh, rule yeah, is... Channel points. The rule is you cannot give it to yourself. You can give it to oh, one of your fellow you. players. So uh -huh. I got I got you all covered. <laughs> yes, so all the channel points, all of that, absolutely use it. Thank you, Daniel, for the bits. You are glorious. Daniel's Level gonna keep you all in All right. Oh my gosh. Glory the train. disaster. Um what you get is you get an environmental effect. This is fun. I love it when it happens this early. Okay. Oh. Glorious disaster. When you get an environmental effect, what that means. I will give you three choices. You will pick one of them, and it will shift the scene. One. Merchants. Two. Guards. 
three warders. Tell me, which of those three do you want to see? Merchants, guards, warders. And while you choose, Kalista, please let me know. Does your warder constantly tell you what's going on? Um, are you are you a little uh, distracted by things, or are you aware of what's happening as well? I'm fairly aware of what's happening as well. Being a green Aja, I've been trained over the many years that I've been alive to be very aware of what's happening around me. Fabulous. Um, how do you feel about Evan constantly pointing out to you dangers in the room? It's slightly annoying, but he's <laughs> young. And Ooh, tell me about born. this. Now I want to know about your relationship. <laughs> uh, well, I am significantly older than he is. I'm uh, 126 years old, and he's maybe in his 30s. <laughs> maybe. It's only 30s. Um, so <laughs> the dynamic is... Uh, very much one of I let him like a puppy almost like go do his thing and then come back and tell me what he wants to tell me but with the kind of overseeing eye of one that is more astute yeah fabulous I love it so an environmental effect has been invoked Thanks for being an ally orders Warders. Evan. As though it is second nature. Your sword comes out of its sheath in your hand to defend your Aes Sedai from an incoming strike. Tell me, Sunil, why did you draw your sword? So I, I, I do uh, unfolding the fan to, to draw my, my sword. Uh, is there a strike there? <laughs> Sunil, was this a little test? Was this a little introduction? Seeing the other water cloak in the room? So you look up and you, you see a, a... Can you hear me? Is it working? Yes, oh, yes, go. That's right. I, I, um... You look up and you see a uh, a tall, dark-skinned man who you would not really recognize immediately uh, because he's not wearing um, uh, his cloak or giving off obvious signs. But it's relatively apparent, especially when you see that the blade that is that you're currently blocking with your blade is um, angled in such a manner as to be one that would not have killed, would have perhaps uh, left a scar. Um, <laughs> and, and let's call that a life lesson. Um, as you look into a relatively um, grizzled, maybe sort of 50-ish um, face, um, <laughs> and um, fabulous. Yeah, wasn't I, uh, I wasn't expecting you. Nope. That's why this is a new and exciting environmental effect. Tell me, what is your relationship to Evan? No, sorry, that's what he says. So he looks at Evan and he says, I wasn't expecting you. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I that's were, right. I thought you were talking to me, your mysterious narrator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, no, so he looks, he looks, looks at, uh, um, at Evan and says, I wasn't expecting you. What are you doing here? Well... Where, uh... Was this your sister? Where Sister Hesper goes, Sister Hesper goes, I go. Of course. So, you've come then. That's surprising. surprising you made it through your training. Not hearing? Can you not hear us? I uh, can now. Say again. Oh, okay. Uh, it's surprising to see you here as well. 
And I put a hand on Evan's arm. Before, before you put your hand on Evan's arm, the entire bar suddenly, because there was a strike from a warder up here in the north, they recognized that cloak and they recognized that sword. Because there was a strike from a warder, the entire bar jumps to their feet, except for the very wealthy merchant, all drawing weapons that were hidden about their person. Tell me, how do the three of you deal with the fact that the entire bar is now ready to go to war? I just look, I just look at the two warders and say, <laughs> was this really necessary? <laughs> I think we might have caused a disturbance, Sunil. Maybe uh, we should put our swords away. Good to see people are ready. <laughs> Snail will, uh, will smile and put his sword away and then reach his arm across to uh, uh, towards Evan uh, to clasp for him. And I will take his hand. Yeah. Um, everyone, everyone is still ready to go. They're not privy to this conversation. They're starting to creep up near you, starting to look out the windows for an attack. Are you going, what are you going to do? I'm going to step forward and try to defuse this situation Ooh. and just say, all is fine. It was a friendly scuffle. We are fine. Please, please enjoy your meals. As they see the ageless face and composure of an Aes Sedai, they are visibly calmed. They start to see their weapons, but they are waiting for the warders to put theirs away as well. So, I will, in, in customary uh, fashion, uh, to fold the fan <laughs> in the proper, uh, proper way, and then <laughs> kind of just nod to the rest of the room. It's like, cool, guys. It's cool. <laughs> the bartender, recognizing that things just about got out of control, um, pounds a new, pounds open a new keg and says, everybody get some beer on the house. Who wants some ale? And with that, you hear a, a great cry come up from the crowd. Everyone happy for free booze. <laughs> I'm gonna give the bartender a little nod and kind of a smile, a small smile, as a, like a thank you for reinforcing the fact that everything's fine. Um, he he nods to you, and then um, as you pass him, he says, "I'll put it on your tab." <laughs> I would expect no less. <laughs> thank you. Now that you have diffused the situation in the bar and have met the warder of your friend. Where will you go now? Sunil, did you have a place that you were sitting? Or were you just waiting for us to walk through the door? Um. Personally, I was uh, I was hoping for a bar fight. I fancy I get scrap. Actually, it's been a while. Um, no, I'm waiting for uh, for the boss. Would you care to join us? Where are you going? I would like a drink and something to eat. And I look around. Is there any open tables? Um, sort of every table as the three of you get closer to it sort of empties out and then will fill back up as you move further in. All right, so, well, yeah, anyone that you want. <laughs> okay, then the next table that we that um, I begin to approach and they do that, um, I will just sit down and Thanks. with Please. the assumptive wow. air that I will be followed. <laughs> <laughs> Because you will. You are the Aes the die here. You have control of this situation. And thank you for the follow, Dreaded GM. You get a little wink from Corton. You sure do. Wink. 
And now, tell me, what are you thinking about? What do you need to discuss? We need to discuss what we're doing here and where Hesper is. Because I need to get an update a little bit on what's happening and the details of why we were called. All right. uh, She'll be here when she's here. There's no point getting too, uh, too uptight about it. She keeps her own schedule. You knew this. Hesper as an Aes Sedai, what you all know of Hesper is that she is, first off, she is brown Aja. So she loves her books. She's always very interested in knowledge. And she really enjoys going out amongst normal people outside of Tar Valen in order to really experience what's going on in the world around her. Um, She earlier this morning told Sunil, her warder, that she would be heading to the market to go and explore um, if vegetation this close to the blight is altered in any way. And she would like, because she's planning on writing a research paper about it. Of course. So when was the last time that you saw her? This morning. I mean, uh, and so he'll relate that um, uh, that, that, that she's off. But uh, you know how it, uh, maybe you don't, but you know how it is with the Browns. Uh, I do. do I'm just surprised that you left her alone. And as she says that, through your warder's bond, Sunil, you suddenly feel incredible fear and pain from your eyes to die. I will be clutching my head at that point, and then standing up, picking up my sword and saying, Well, you come with bad news then, don't you? Let's go. Uh, Does it give me a direction or a way of moving? I love how you just blamed them for that. That makes me so happy. (laughs) Um, Everything was fine until they showed up. That's right, it was. God damn green Aja. <laughs> the ones that tried to start a bar fight. <laughs> now, um, something for everyone in the audience to know about warders. When they take the warder bond, they begin, they create an empathic bond with their Aes Sedai. They can feel the things that their Aes Sedai is feeling, even if they're very far away. And it is incredibly useful because warders at any given moment will be able to point directly to where their Aes Sedai are. They always know exactly what's going on with them. So, um, yes, Sunil, you know exactly where your Aes Sedai is. You know that she is in pain and she is terrified, which for the most powerful people on the continent is saying something. So, you, Sunil, are headed to the market. What are Kalista and Evan doing? The moment he stands up, I stand up. Hand on sword, but look to my Sedai. We'll follow, of course. Knowing, recognizing what this is, this is not, this is not a good thing. Um, nope. So we will, we will follow um, with haste. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. You go rushing out of the bar. You don't sense anything in the street. People don't seem to be alarmed about anything right this moment. Um, And you're not sure why. Um, If you would all like to head over to the Roll20 and pop your tokens into the map that you are now on at the southern edge of the market square. That would be glorious. You would make me very happy. So you to be clear, the market, she's, feeling like, in pa- she's feeling in pain or she's just feeling fear? She is feeling both fear and pain. What you can sense is that the pain is sharp and I'd like you to roll me a medicine check. So while I'm doing that, the other thing 
you two will notice Callista and Evan, um, and you may have seen this before, you may not have done, but you notice that um, uh, the medicine check was a a grand total of, uh, or let me roll it, sorry, let's roll it here. You also, Soul's Rolls is giving you advantage. <gasps> oh, 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 Because Soul's Rolls is delightful. <laughs> uh, Souls is here all the time. He's got like a million channel points, so he can pretty much just give you whatever you need. That's very, very kind. So that is a seventeen, in fact, which is which is really rather marvelous. Thank you very much, Souls. One, one thing you nice. notice though is as uh, Sunil is walking through and heading towards the market, sort of single purposed, and his previously sort of um, sort of almost whimsically sort of sarcastic uh, demeanor has been replaced by one of just like um, uh, bordering anger like you know he's certainly just very concerned and he's just kind of pushing forward and you notice that his skin has started to blotch out into a kind of like grayish copperish color as a um, a bracer that he's wearing on his arm begins to flow and melt like along his arm and across his body <sighs> Oh, that's fabulous. I love it. <laughs> now, as you head to the market, with that medicine check of 17, you can tell because of the sharpness of the pain that your Aes Sedai has been stabbed with a sharp implement. You don't know what and you don't know where on the body, but that, that feeling of pain okay. is there. Okay. All right. And Ramji and Lando, can I have your tokens, please? Oh, uh, I didn't 100% know that I was in the scene yet. <laughs> All right. So are we are we placing where, where are, are you wanting us to place our tokens? So you guys are gonna be down here at the South Sea. I can take control of them because I'm the magical, I'm the mysterious narrator. I sure Ooh. am. <laughs> and Ramji, if you just are. if you just pop, there we go, perfect. So you are all in the market. You see, the market is a hubbub of activity. There are many people here. It's obvious that this is the day of the week when the farmers, the ranchers, all of the people from outside the walls bring their goods inside the walls to market. You can see all kinds of things. And you, in fact, see many faces that are not from the Northern realms. You see many faces that are from all over the Southern regions coming up, especially um, Andor, Karhain, people from all over and other Northerners, too, that are not from Shinar, are represented here as well. But the majority of them obviously are local. There are many people wandering around. Please give me a perception check. And Sunil, you may give yours with advantage. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, where is it? You can do it. You can do it. I'm excited. All right. I found it. Sorry. Oh, damn. Evan is real perceptive. He knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sunil, you are a little distracted by the pain that you are feeling and the rising panic at the fact that your eye, there is something wrong with your eye is to die. Um, yeah, it's well funny. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, Callista, you um, see that there is a tiny bit of commotion. Um, towards the northern end of the market. Evan, you see them. You see a woman in very nice brown robes drop a book on the sidewalk as she is hauled away by several other people towards this alley over here. And as that happens, before Sunil, you feel her lose consciousness. She manages to get a single word out. And that is Dark Friends! And the entire market erupts into chaos as 
a sister dressed in black steps forward to cover their escape, flanked by two men. Please, everyone, give me initiative. <laughs> All right, let's see. So, Evan, just FYI, um, if you click on your token and then roll initiative, it'll roll directly into my turn order. But I can make that happen anyway. So, Evan, you got a 16. There we go. Sunil, you got an 11. And let me get that in there. Fabulous. And now Kalista, ooh, with a 17. Let's see what the magic lady does. That's going to be fun. All right. Let me get a few other turns into this order. As soon as the word dark friend is screamed, Something that you see from the other end of the market is an Aiel. Very strange in a walled town, especially a wetlander town. Tell me, Lando, what do they see? Well, they see a tall, lean Aiel with its... I think he kept up his... He's covered. He has his traditional covered hood and he has a number of spears on his back but he is as soon as he heard dark friends has immediately drawn his bow and is ready to deal some justice nice nice i love it and tell me miss Callista. Since it looks like you are going to be the first one to enter the battle. What do you do? Um, I'd like to move to towards the area that they, um, or to the evil woman. All right. Um, What's your movement? Uh, it's 30. So yeah, it's 30. You're going to move out in front of me? Yes, I'm going to move out in front of you because I'm first. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would like to Please. do... Um, no, but Burning Hands doesn't have like a... I can't... No, that's not... I can't do that. Never mind. Um, <laughs> guys, it's my first time playing sor- Sorcerer. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> tell me, tell me. Yeah, I, I'm, can I can I attack with a firebolt? With a firebolt or a fireball? Fire, 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 fire bolt. Fire bolt. You yeah. certainly can. Roll me attack and damage, please, and let's see if you hit this woman. Oh, oh dear! My goodness gracious! You suddenly feel. The true source slipping from you as a shield is slammed between you and this spell. I want you to give me an intelligence save. Okay. Because that's fine. Um... (laughs) Oh, no. That's a 10. You see the weave of spirit coming at you to cut your spell away. This person is going to give her advantage. Oh, fabulous. And with that, also, hey, uh, hey, D&D Dingus, Tailmonger, and Jmar, thank you so much for the follows. You are fabulous. Now, all right, Haley, why don't you tell me what your experience is right now as you see this incredibly deft use of spirit just ripping apart your weave. There's definite surprise. I'm taken aback and maybe step back 
a little bit to see this amount of power being used um, so quickly, and and um, the whole scenario is a little overwhelming. Um, so I'm definitely shocked and surprised, and I feel um, the the ripping apart of my weave. Um, it's almost visceral, and it's it's kind of shocking to me. In that now. Moment. I need you to give me a charisma save. Oh, you had advantage on that intelligence check, by the way. Yeah, didn't you? She... Did I have advantage on oh, that? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. well, give me... Yeah. We, might, I, I we, we, we might be rewriting this story a little bit, folks. Okay, hold on. Let's, sorry, I uh, thought let's, I re-roll. Let's, let's, see. let's see. Let's see what's going on. Oh, with a 17, oh. we're going to rewind the clock here. Why don't you tell me what you do with your weave to avoid hers. Okay, um, so the, the firebolt doesn't land, right? And it's- Well, well, first, the first thing we have to do, she is sending a weave of spirit to you, which is how you shred spells or block spells, right? You have right. been weaving pure fire. Tell me how you shift that weave to avoid it being destroyed by her weave of spirit. Okay. Um, as I as I reach out and grab um, both mentally and physically onto the weave, I kind of bring it together with my fingers and send it forward. And as soon as I see the the kind of shield thing coming up, can I like almost like dodge to the side to get it to go around? <laughs> I will say that you use a tiny little bit of air to hey, actually yeah. bend the course of your spell so that the spirit aiming at it misses it by just a hair. Okay. And as yep. you do that, with a 25, you hit her square in the face. Nice. It knocks her hood back. And you see in front of you an Aes Sedai that you recognize. As that happens, you suddenly see the weave of disguise that has been around the two men standing next to her. And as the air around them ripples, you see two Trollocs suddenly appear where men were standing before. At the sight of the dark spawn in the middle of the city, there is panic. Some people draw swords, but the vast majority of them immediately begin to run in panic. It is going to create some chaos for you all as you attempt to move forward. Kalista Sedai, you have used your action and your reaction in order to land that blow. You've used your movement. Is there a bonus action that you would like to use? No. All right, then we will move on to the Aes Sedai in front of you. It is obvious that she does not care about the people around her. And so she will cast a fireball into your midst. Dang. Oh dear. Oh wow. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. These black Aja bitches are not fucking around. They are here for you. Sorry. Um just accidentally shot down her character sheet. Why don't you <laughs> tell me what you're thinking right now, Warders? Now that you see another Aes Sedai entering the fray. Well, first shocked, my ice and I just ran in front of me and isn't near me for her to protect her. 
<laughs> God damn it! <laughs> now, I don't recognize this Aes Sedai. Um, you both recognize her. It's not, the tower is not a huge place. Um, you definitely know uh, that she is who she is. Like, sheer mm-hmm. terror. This is the worst possible situation. Yes. Black Aja aren't supposed to exist. I'm supposed to protect you from physical stuff. I can't help you with this one. Nope. So. This. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not great. I, um, I could down her. <laughs> this. Because you just hit her, she is distracted, so she's only going to do half damage with this fireball. That's but good. let's see what she does. Still- so, yeah. all of you who are down in the southern area are hit for 12 damage. 12 fire damage. Wait, are, 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 are you, you in, that safe? in that area? Uh, you both get, you all get to, please give me, sorry. Thank you for reminding me. Yep. Please, uh, <laughs> dexterity saves for everyone. If you don't mind. All right. Let's see. Let's see. I roll higher than I did. You also all have a plus two. Danielle oh, gave you all two. a plus two. So, so, so uh, and Evan has eight. advantage from Snowflake. Oh, oh, very nice. It's very hard very to keep nice. track of it all. I will do my best to try to <laughs> try to help. Right, yeah, so you guys, in. if you guys get things, just write it down somewhere because we have. I've got to say, we have such an amazing audience. We've oh, got amazing. such an amazing group of people who love helping the characters, which is why I have to make difficult encounters. He does. <laughs> <laughs> that advantage didn't unfortunately help at all. <laughs> you, can, you can make it a 15. I don't know if that'll make a difference. Yeah, you can. So the yeah, DC also... is 14. So Kalista, you get it. If Evan, if you use your plus two, you can get it. Sadly, yeah. it looks like Sunil. I'll, I'll give him advantage too. Yeah, oh him, yay, Sunil! That'll be sad. Give That's me a second. Fun. Give me a, give me advantage on that, please. There we go. <laughs> because you are all used to magic happening around you, you understand when this woman started gesturing. Now, when you weave magic, you don't have to gesture, but you can tell that Kalista and this woman both had the same teacher because they use the same hand gestures when they are weaving a fireball. So, tell me, how do you jump out of the way? In, in Sunil's case, you see as he moves forward, uh, uh, the fire licks around him, but then the, uh, I think the phrase is the Tarangril that he has which is glowing already over his skin, just glows even brighter and brighter, almost tucking the the fire out of the air and into itself as it continues to spread across his body entirety. Soon he's coated an entire layer of a kind of glowing orange metal. Nice. (laughs) Evan doesn't have a Tyrangriol, so he just jumps and runs and jumps forward towards his Aes Sedai. Fabulous. Um, I I think Callista is um going to just I guess kind of like get down because I think this took her by massive amounts of surprise, so she's not able to react as quickly as she normally would, and so she physically reacts by just getting down really low to the ground it's and dirt. kind of covering herself. <laughs> Uh, fabulous. And you see as three villagers were not able to escape the blast oh. or duck behind things, there are now three charred corpses amidst the market stall. And you can feel your Aes Sedai, Hesper, getting further away. She's she straight laughs. north, is she? She what? She's, she's straight north, is it? She is actually northwest. She is heading down the alley over here. Okay, I see that. So, the black sister laughs at all of you and says, 
You'll join us soon enough. <laughs> Kill them all! Except the woman. Bring her with you. And with that, she will begin to run down the alley. Evan! What do you do? Um, I... Of course, I'm going to do you run as fast as I can to my ice and eye. Uh, so Fabulous. My, don't jump check my movement. I believe I'm at 30. You yeah. should be 30, yeah. So I'm going to use my 30 feet of movement to run up right next door. Fabulous. Um, and then I'm going to... I got to draw my sword. Awesome. That is, is that free action. action? That's a free action. Okay. That is a free action to draw your weapon. It's a bonus action to uh, sheath it. And then can I hold my attack until they get closer? You certainly can. So I'll hold that and wait for them. I'm not leaving your side. Fabulous. Next, a mysterious Aiel standing behind the Trollocs appears. Tell me, Gahard, what do you do? So Gahard is going to move this way and do like a leaping roll over this stand and pop up and take a pot shot at this uh, Trolloc with an arrow. Fabulous. Give me that attack and damage. Let's look at it. Let me see. Let me see. I love them dice. Love watching what oh, happens. Did go? One. It did not. <laughs> weird. Okay. You're just, I got a crit. It's a crit. I swear to God. It's, it's three crits. <laughs> it's weird. It's not letting me roll on it. That's very odd. Yeah. So. All right. Ooh. I'm not showing there me. is... Okay, um, it's a plus nine. I'll, oh I'll my roll it god, on. that's rude. That's rude. <laughs> it's a 19 um, to hit. Um, it does hit. And Fabulous. It is a d8 plus five. That is going to be nine damage. Nine All right. piercing arrow damage. Yeah, baby. There is. <laughs> you see as an arrow lodges itself in the shoulder of the Trolloc, who then immediately looks down at, with disdain at it, just swipes his arm, cracking the arrow, and starts to move forward. Anything else from you? I don't believe so. All yeah, right. That's it. The Trolloc, not terribly intelligent, sees the groups of people down here, and he's hungry. He wants them people in his stew pot. So, Bad he person. heads down here and gets ready to destroy you all when you get closer. Sunil, your eyes to die is moving, and in pain, you know there are dark sisters here, the thing you have been hunting for. What do you do? Oh. Thank you very much to uh, Hi C, Hi Pixie, Pixie, uh, in Pixie. The chat who, who has uh, given me haste for three rounds. And, uh, Yay! Oh, oh, I love love it. It. Thank Did you very much. Um, oh my uh, god! And Gahard, you get a rare item, <laughs> another rare item for the adventure. This is going to last for the whole campaign if it. you give people Thank rare you. items. They get cool stuff. We love it. <laughs> so, so with, with, with haste. Thank you, Dana Yell. You're yeah. so kind. Get yourself a Terangrial, mate. Uh, right. but, um, uh, so, um, uh, in fifth edition, um, which we're, what we're playing, an adaptation, um, uh, I get a plus two AC. My speed is doubled, and I get advantage to deck saves because I need it. Um, and I gain additional <laughs> action, which I can use. So, I will, because my speed is now 60. Yeah. Um, super, how far away super fast. is my ace to die? Um, you can't tell the exact distance, but she is 
definitely further than you can reach in this round. Okay, so that's so how far that's, away is the that's black? That's 60 feet there. right there. That's 60 right there? Yeah. Okay, so I can I can just do that as my move. Yeah. Uh, and that will then put that person within 25 feet of me, right? Okay. That's right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll give it a she chance. just killed three people in front of you, by the way. Well, then she should die three times over, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So you hear, um, you just hear Sunil say, Give her back. This is the last time you're going to be breathing. And um, uh, <laughs> one, two, he's got a low charisma. Four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve. So that's the twelve. And then. Um, I will use the hasted action, uh, which is the to dash, which will give Fabulous. me get, get me all the way one, two, three. Oh, yeah, day he bad. Um, and uh, my free action as I'm going is un unlike maybe some of the more complicated, you know, the kind of waters that you meet in the fancy bars, hanging out with <laughs> the fancy people, like. You notice as you see, you know, uh, Sunil kind of moving towards it. He is um, like his cloak is fanning out behind him, and as it does so, a huge fuck off glaive <laughs> is being pulled ah. from behind his shoulders. Right, it's in the shoulder strap, the strap just like quangs, and he kind of pulls it out, and he kind of just begins to spin it as he moves. Right. Um, so I'm so going to say, I'm going to say that head. your glaive is actually a essentially an uncommon. Terangriel that is collapsible. Ooh, Ooh that's nice. Oh, Ooh, awesome. Uh, so, in fact, even, even better. So, as he's moving across, he's holding out this glaive, and it just kind of just like, just like spans out into sort of like, you know, <laughs> into space. Um, and it just glows with a sort of slightly just annoyed color. I don't know what an annoyed color is to anybody, anyone that's watching, but whatever your, your color of annoyance yeah, is, a chartreuse, color, obviously. Is, yes. A slightly, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps a slight chartreuse on beige carpet kind of annoyance. <laughs> um, and so, uh, as you, as, as he's pounding towards him, um, do I have any, uh, as I'm there, I'm about to like lay into this I said, I, uh, do I know, is there a, a good way or a bad way to attack an Aes Sedai? Um, you know that Aes Sedai are very adept at magical combat and not very adept at physical combat. But Wonderful. Um, they do know, these are Black Aja. You have, there are certain things that are prohibited for Aes Sedai to use. Obviously the Dark Sisters are not restrained by such things. Just as I'm going out to it, I'll just literally, all you hear is, give her back! And he strikes with the first blade, rolling a 21 to hit and pulling 11 points of slashing damage. I will pump a smite into that. If all that right. Okay. We are going to yeah. go into, before you do that, mm -hmm. we're going to go into some microseconds here. Mm. Haley. Yes. Kalista. You see a weave of air spring up. What do you do? Uh, what direction is it coming from? She, it looks as though she is about to completely block this attack. From um, Sunil? Yes. You've used your reaction. You can't do anything about it, but you can warn him. What do you say? Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to shout, um, oh, frick. I'm just going to shout out, she's going to block it! Having heard that, Sunil, you realize, because you have worked with Aes Sedai before, she is spinning a shield of air. You know that the place that you were going to strike before isn't going to hit. What do you do? So, if it works for you this way, uh, I've got the Polar Master feet, which means I can use the bonus attack of the butt end of my glaive. So, <gasps> it, what I'm going to do 
in theory, I'll still use my attack, but actually, I'm going to faint. She's going to pop the air shield up. I'm going to sweep the <laughs> butt end of the glaive and, like, literally just straight into her stomach and then yes! carry on with the main sweat. That's yes! badass. <laughs> Hell yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, right. That's yeah. order. Because technically that would be a bonus action. I don't yep. think it does quite as much damage. It doesn't. It's I'll, I'll roll it. It's slightly different. Um, but it is still a... Hey, I rolled the damage, not the hit. Pardon me, I'll do it again. Uh, the bonus attack is a hit of 17 plus... Uh, Very nice. Yeah, it's it's a nine hit more that. damage. Yes, See? that does nine. I, I will smite on that as well if that's okay. Oh damn! Yes, you can smite on that. Um, um, what yeah. I'm gonna say for this smite yep. is because this is a terangrial, there is a second hidden blade in the butt of your polearm. Ooh. And when you press a button, it pops out doing more damage. Nice. There we go. So as the the uh, the the, so the ball end of the glaive kind of stabs into the stomach, a a small catch where by his finger he kind of twists it, and then this blade just pops out of the bottom and kind of spikes into a stomach. So that's a total of <laughs> uh, nine points from the from the butt end and the additional eight from the blade, and then he'll spin the <laughs> spin the glaive and actually hit twice. So the first one uh, is with that 21 that does 11 points um, and the second one is going to go again with a... Oh my lord! 15 and if it's okay I will also smite on both of those. Alright, so you hit with <laughs> the first one. Yep. And she suddenly panics. It looks like she is near to death. As you attempt to land the second blow, she bats it as she sees it coming, bats it out of the way with a weave of air and then simply touches your forehead and you begin to scream in agony. Give me a constitution saving throw. Ooh. Uh, okay. Uh, Constitution uh, Oh. Oh. <laughs> the wrong you, you feel pain like you've never felt before your whole life. You feel as though your bones are made of acid and your muscles are made of oil that has been lit on fire. You crumble to the ground, and from down the alleyway, you hear your Aes Sedai scream as she feels this pain coming through the bond. You are prone and stunned. Okay. But Dang. this Aes Sedai is looking real bad. As she does this to you, Kalista, you see her trying to do something to her weave that you've never seen anyone do before. Almost like she's trying to tie her weave in a knot and make it permanent. But before she can do that, you hear someone calling from down the alleyway and you see her limping as fast as she can away from the battle. She disappears down the alley. And you, Sunil, as soon as she leaves, suddenly feel the pain stop. You are prone, but you are no longer stunned. Um. And now, the next Trolloc comes barreling towards the villagers. Kalista, you've just seen things that an Aes Sedai is not supposed to be able to do. How are you feeling? Pissed off. Yeah, we're bad. Like, really angry, because 
like we took oaths, damn it. And this is <laughs> very not okay. Um, I I want to take care of these Trollocs and then take off after her. So, um, yeah, that's where I am right now. Like fury and rage. Do it, fabulous. Um, your next spell will be empowered because of that rage. Ooh. Yeah. Meaning that if fun. it does damage, if it does damage, you will be able to re-roll two of the damage dice if you so choose. So tell me, Kalista Sedai, you've got two Trollocs standing right in front of you. What are you gonna do? I wanna fireball their asses. Payback. You are only fourth level. You yeah. don't know Fireball I yet. Want to. No. Why don't you tell me how that feels? With the having seen what this evil dark ice that I has done, black ice that I has done, I reach into the weave in a way that is powered and like fueled by this fury and I grip it. What, I, just, what like, I will say, what I will say is you recognize that the weave that you use for your firebolt can be changed. Okay. Tell All me right. about that. So fueled by that extra energy, I feel a shift in the weave itself, something I haven't experienced before <sighs> at that level. Uh, and you I'm also able saw to. It be done too. You saw her what? Cast, you saw her cast it too. Yeah, and I saw her cast it too, and we have the same teacher. So mimicking the way that she had moved her hands and what that means internally with the weave. I grab that new thing I've never seen before and I pull on it and let it fly. What is that thing? Is it air to expand your firebolt? Is it extra fire? Is it spirit to, to shift the power level of the spell? What changes? It's the, the spirit um, that is suddenly infusing with the fire that I already have to make it burn near <laughs> white and super hot. Ooh, I love it. So when super now, from fire. now on, when your fireball hits, it still looks like a firebolt, but as it gets to its target, it will go from red to blue to white. And once it turns white, when it gets to its target, there will be an absolute silence as it sucks all of the air around it into itself and then explodes with the force of 8d6. That you, my dear, have suddenly awesome. learned the spell Fireball. <laughs> Give it to me. Yay. Okay. Roll me um, them Fireball numbers. <laughs> so um, I did the fire bolt because I don't have fireball in my. Okay, that is yet. totally fine. Just um, so, um, so what that means is, what is your what is your um, DC, your spell DC? <clears throat> um, it, it oh geez, it keeps jumping between. Um, spell DC is for attack, or for save DC is fifteen. 15, okay. Well, one of them fails spectacularly and one of them succeeds. So, what, and I'm, uh, since you don't have Fireball on your thing yet, I am going to roll for you. Are there any of these that you would like to re-roll? You may re-roll up to two. No, um... Are you good? I think that's good. None of them are low enough that I'd really want to re-roll. Fabulous. Well, why don't you tell me the story of how one of them gets out of the way and one of them does not? 
So they're slightly staggered in front of each other. So they're on the same plane, but one's a little bit in front of the other. And so as they see this burning and multicolored changing ball, um, one jumps behind that box that's behind, that's right directly behind him. But the one that's just in front takes the full force of the fireball. Uh, and he sure does. <laughs> has, like nearly incinerates his entire body. <laughs> It hits them square in the chest, doing, what even is that, 34 points of damage. Nice. And he is looking a mess right now. He is looking real bad. Um, the other one uh, definitely gets some splinters in the face as the box in front of him gets shattered but he only takes 17 points of damage. Now, Delight. is there anything else that you would like to do? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I am going <laughs> to, I am going to move slightly behind Evan so that Fabulous. he can um, kind of take that. And then can I raise my shield is that an action so shield is a reaction for when okay. you um take when you're about to take damage okay then yeah. never mind um then yeah i guess as a, as a little bit of a free action i'm gonna look at evan and say finish it ah! with pleasure <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm so happy about this all right evan how are you gonna finish it all right so one <laughs> Right in front of me is the one still alive, right? Um, well, they're both still alive. Both still, both still alive. All right. The one that's hurting so the I'm most is run... right in front of you. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to run to the one right in front of me. Um, can't move myself all of a sudden. Oh, pointer. I mm. will run up to him, and then I will use my... Actually, no, I won't do that. I'm going to attack with my sword. Let's... All right. Get some Heron Mark Blade action. Tell me. Oh. Oh, oh damn. Okay. All right. Did I not uh, roll damage? Uh, you right. can click on, did not click on the purple or the, the pink deal on the roll 20 and it will do it. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. Are you using this one handed or two handed? I'm using this two handed. All right. Then. You did seven damage and. Oh wait, so it's slashing one hand is less. It rolls. It rolls individually. Yes. Yeah, so you you got a two plus five on the two handed, and you got an eight plus five on the other one. You rolled max damage on the one handed. Um, <laughs> they should have done one handed. <laughs> right, but as this happens, you suddenly feel a burst of adrenaline. This is the first time you all have actually gotten to use, to be in combat in quite a while. And because of that, <clears throat> you may have a second attack this turn. Dun, dun, dun. Guess what's happening right now? You are learning your fifth level ability. Mm -hmm. Extra attack. Ooh, fancy. And there you if you are using them, Redemption. Why don't you Why don't you tell me how you finished it? So I uh again swipe once doesn't quite cut him down and I am angry at this dark spawn. I hate dark spawn. <laughs> so I will take the blade and I will shove it straight into him doing the falcon stoops and gut him and rip the sword out. <laughs> nice. As the sword comes out, you see the Trolloc fall to your feet, still showing its teeth and clamping its jaws up and down. And it is dead. Anything else that you would like to do, Evan? As I kill that one, I then look up at the other Trolloc there. 
and entering the flame in the void, I will use my bonus bonus action to do compelled duel. Very nice. <laughs> to compel him to fight me. I love it. So, uh, let's do a little wisdom save for Mr. Ogre, Mr. Trolloc, and he <laughs> fails. So, no one exists but me. <laughs> he only has eyes for the guy that just gutted his friend. That's that's all he knows now. So, Gahard. Sorry, Wubba. <laughs> Gahard, why don't you tell me what are you gonna do? All right, so Gahard is gonna run down this area, but as he makes this gap, he looks ahead and he sees that the, that the area that he's gonna be running to has no line of sight. So he's actually gonna, as he runs by here, he's gonna take two arrows, notch them at the same time, and release them as he runs by this gap right here and shoot twice at the Trolloc. Fabulous, I love it. All right, because this is a bit of a trick shot, um, I'm going to need you to give me, let's say concentration. Uh, give me a constitution check, please. Constitution check. To see check. if you can hold it, yeah. Okay. Constitution, or constitution save. Oh, um, it's the and... same. Gahar's been doing this a real long oh, time. Oh, yeah. yes! He's been he's, practicing. Uh, he's been practicing yeah. his double shot. Like this is, yeah, he knows. He knows. And Gahar has now learned his fifth level ability. And now, canonically, the attack. only way he does his second attack is with two arrows. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my it, God. It still looks like I'll right. not be able to roll from the character sheet, which is fine. Give me one sec. So we're going to do a... <laughs> There Hold on. and just a moment. There, so that that's enough. That's a seventeen and a sixteen, um, plus nine. Yeah. So <laughs> then we're gonna do two d eights plus ten. So that's gonna be fourteen damage as he takes two 14. shots and shoots the stupid ugly trollic as he runs by <laughs> this gap right here. And you say it's fourteen damage. Yes. All right. Fabulous. Anything else that you would like to do on your turn, good sir? That is it. All right. Well, Gahard, I have your character sheet pulled up now, so I should be able to roll for you if you would like oh, nice. in the future. And the Trolloc, seeing only you. Finally, a Trolloc gets to attack someone with your damn <laughs> fireballs and friggin' sword choppiness. <laughs> and he is going to bring his great club that he carries down upon your feeble little head. Oh. And he hits for 13 bludgeoning damage. Dang. I fixed it, by the way, Kyle. So... Oh, fabulous. Ow. How does that feel, Evan? How you feeling? Uh, that hurts. He slams down on me. I take it on the shoulder. Like a man. <laughs> <laughs> My knees try to buckle underneath me, but I hold. He looks at you and laughs. And you can feel his fetid breath on your face as he does so. Sunil, you are prone, but you can do things. What will you do? Can I still see that Ace of I, 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 um, the black? No, she ran and she did something and suddenly just disappeared from view. And can I feel my ace? Like, can they go, um, is she nearby? Um, 
she is still traveling and she's traveling very quickly at this point. Um, she must be traveling by horse. So uh, Snow looks around, uh, sees one clock left. Um, sort of is very, you can see there's a look of just complete frustration on his face. Um, we'll use half his movement to get up. Um, and you're uh, still hasted. Which is, I'm still hasted, so yeah. the remainder of which will get me the 45 feet across the Trolloc. Um, right. So it will put me uh, right here. Um, and then I will uh, just carve into it with my glaive. Uh, Do it. In, in just frustration and uh, a whole bunch of other other emotions. Uh, so let's start with um, uh, let's start with finding where I'm going to click on things. Uh, good job, me. And okay. you may do this with advantage because he is dueling someone else who's within five feet of him. Okay. Oh, uh, well, damn! Good. Thank God for that advantage. Thank you for the advantage, indeed. So, um, you were about yes. to like stand there and pick your teeth with your glaive or something. <laughs> indeed, like indeed, indeed. So it's a natural one, but also that I. I had a total, total of 18 on the second roll, so it's the first hit. Uh, the uh, the butt end of it with the bonus action strike uh, uh, will... So 10 points of damage with the uh, the, the main glaive as it's sort of just a, a straight cut, and then I'm, I just will, will use the butt end and slam it into its head if I can, uh, using the momentum of the strike. Uh, let's go and find that. Go here, and uh, do it again. Get them. Trollocs uh, are gross. Okay. They are. So that's mm. seven points for both of them. There's a total Another of 17 points. Seven percent. points. Very nice. It does not like either one of you. It's going to write a strongly worded letter to your Aya Sedai's, is what it's going to do. Um, and as this they, Trolloc... They're literate? <laughs> some of them are they can they can read sometimes they if they're taught <laughs> okay <laughs> but Callista he just carved into your water what are you gonna do be very angry and chastise <laughs> him very deeply yes um, that's right with, with him being so close um, Frank. I just don't. I don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna cast Fire Bolt directly at him because Fire Bolt would get the other two. So yep. I don't want to do that. Um. So yeah. So I'll cast Fire uh, Fire Bolt and grab the grab the weave and send it directly to the piece of crap that it is. Ooh. <laughs> Um, but yes. Do so it. 20, uh, so five points of... 20 to fire. hit, yep. Yep. And that's five points of fire damage. I love and it. Hits. Don't, don't forget that anything that uses fire damage because of the subclass that you did... We created fabulous subclasses for these guys. Um, yeah. because the subclass, um, you get are empowered. Any fire spell that you use. Oh. That's true. Um, Do you want to re-roll the five? You can if you want. It's just exactly average. Yes. <laughs> yes, I would like to do that. So how do I do that? Um, just I will, you know, it's a 1d10, right? Uh, yeah. All right. You can just go over to the side to where the dice is. Ooh, and it. it'll... Oh, okay, good. Roll the one. We'll use mine. Okay, let's use yours. Your... <laughs> <laughs> Take the eight. You, See, maybe that was a lesson. You, you cast this fireball, this fire bolt, directly at him, literally taking off his bottom jaw. He is still standing, but there is now saliva and blood just pouring onto your warder. Tell me, Evan. On you. What are you going to do? Being his uh, jaw blast off, I'm going to take my attack to shove my sword straight up through the top jaw that's left, 
through his brain. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, give me that attack roll. Here we go. Hand mark. Oh, okay. Oh, that's dude. Boom. Living you that's critted. a nice one. I need, so what's going to happen here with that crit is that both of you warders recognize all the forms that the other are using. You have trained together for years. Tell me how the two of you together tear this <laughs> fucker apart. So as I, said, I know for mine, he's going to just take that because he's kind of you know bent down from getting whacked on the shoulder and then he's going to come straight up with the dove take flights all the way through his head. <laughs> Uh, and in, instead of that, uh, you, although it's, um, you can see that Sunil is preoccupied, and so a lot of what he's doing are uh, forms and motions just to channel and chivy this uh, this Trolloc into the way of, uh, of, of Evan's play, because this is an inconvenience that is between him and getting to his Ace Sedai. And, you know, he doesn't have time to play with it. I love it. And this Trolloc has been carved to pieces by the two of you. Just crazy. Just crazy. And with that, combat ends. You have won. Yay! Let's give some congratulations to our fabulous yeah. people. First combat. And First combat, yay. You've all learned some new things now that you're back out in the world actually doing the things. Killing the monsters. So of course, Evan yeah. afterwards pulls his sword out and then he's got to sheathe it, but he's got to do the flourish, fling the blood off and slide down. As he holds <laughs> the fan. I love it. And, and then run directly we... over to his eyes to die and see, are you okay? I'm fine. And I'm going to look at uh, Sunil and say, go. Yeah, Sunil hasn't actually, like, in that moment where he run across to her and she, she, she looks over, she sees Sunil's back as he's just, like, running. Um, Sunil, you are intelligent enough to know that if you are facing Black Sisters, you're going to need some help. Tell me, how are you going to leave a trail for the others to follow? So, as he begins to head down this this, this um, alleyway, it becomes apparent that his Aesodai is moving very fast and very fast away. And so there's a point where he stops and skids and holds to a halt. And then looks and is turning back and turns back around and walks back into the uh, the marketplace and looks at them and says, Horses. We need horses. They travel fast. Are you coming? <gasps> oh. I have it all just look at his today. Of course. What and about you? I... Sorry. Um, I will turn to Evan and say, grab the horses. We're following behind. Which we're not far from, from the tavern. The tavern, where no, are we? You are not. You are not. But before you get the horses, we have a giveaway to do. We sure do. Yay, giveaway! Oh, yay! <laughs> Today, we are giving away Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons. We mm -hmm. sure are. We sure are. It is absolutely delightful. I'm very excited about this book coming out. It did get delayed a little bit. It's going to come out on the 26th instead of the 17th. But if you have been following Here's us... Um, sadly, that the uh, it oh, is done. the giveaway oh. is over. It is oh, it is sorry. it is over. Sorry. Sad also, sad face. Also, my bad. <laughs> um, but we are now picking the winner. Let's see. 
Let's see. Um, it is Red Monk 100. Red Monk 100. I hope you are here. Um, please send me, send me a little note in Twitch to let me know you are here. Um, there is a. Uh, I don't see on the list. Uh, if he is not here, we will do another drawing at the end, and someone who is here will be getting a copy of Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons! Yay! And with that, Hooray. thank you for being an There's, And thank you for the follow, West Dog Bay! Yay! You get a little wink from Corton, you sure do pink. So... You know that there are dark spawn. You know that there are evil magic users. You are going to help. Tell me. Garha, ga, gaple, kaple, kaple, ga hard. Do you introduce yourself? Do you trail behind them, seeking to hunt dark spawn? How do you handle this situation? Um, he's not going to say anything. He. And he thinks that of them as weak wetlanders who need <laughs> horses. So he's going to run behind the horses um, because... Yeah, go ahead. Well, don't forget, he does have a lot of respect for people that can... Uh, he knows he knows wise ones. He knows ladies that can channel. Yeah, but in this, in this specific instance, he looks down on them in terms of their yeah, need horses. for horses. Why would you need yeah, horses? Yeah, why would you need horses? Right? Oh, what? No, I agree. As um, someone who and... regularly runs next to cars instead of sitting in them um i 100 percent agree yeah yeah you know? his, <laughs> his thinking is that um a dark Aes Sedai will be worthy to follow and to go after as dark spawn go i love it then but he's not going to say anything to them he's just going to follow running <laughs> you all make it without incident to the stables you get the horses you get yours as well and you take off as you are traveling she continues to get slightly further away though it seems like they're not that you're moving almost as fast as they are at this point but the trail keeps heading north Further nor. Towards the blight? Oh, yeah. Are you deterred? No. No. Nope, that's where he was going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're following the Chiquita down. All right. You travel... For a full day, you sense that they are setting up camp. Your Ayasadai has stopped moving for the day. Tell me, do you make camp or do you keep going? We at if least you keep go rest, <laughs> at least. If you keep going, you will gain a level of exhaustion. If you don't take a long rest this evening, you will each gain a level of exhaustion. Uh, there's a point where Sunil... So they've stopped for the night, have they? It's a, the, she, all you know is that she has stopped moving. And how far away is she? You don't know. Oh, you don't know. But I know the direction, which is towards the yeah. south. Yeah. Once so, she's out of, like, maybe a couple hundred feet, you can't tell mm -hmm. the exact distance. You can. You sense that she's within probably, like, ten miles, but... It would be very difficult for you to actually get to her. It would still be another several hours before you manage to get to her. Okay. So, um... Just a sort of... Uh, I, I will stop I'd and say just look. we should stop. Rest. You're no use to your Aes Sedai in an exhausted state. 
Dead horses don't help. That's <laughs> very true, too. Speaking uh, of... I to fight. <laughs> Speaking of dead horses, you are in the Blight. For those of you watching who do not know what the Blight is, the Blight is the land around the prison of the Dark One. It is horrific. In many situations, it looks fine, but every leaf will cut you. Every berry will kill you. It is a tainted land. I would like each of you, as you are setting up camp, to give me a dexterity save. Oh, damn, Callista. Oh, 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 okay. All right. Oh, nice. It's fine. I'm exhausted all the time anyway. <laughs> Evan, Evan, you, you managed to, um, see, see your way clearly through these areas, but, um, the rest of you are each going to take 11 damage as you are setting up camp. Are you conscious still? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as you are setting up camp, um, you don't realize that there is creeping razor vine slowly coming towards the heat of your bodies. And as you are trying to set up camp, you keep cutting yourself on this. Mm -hmm. How y'all doing? That, I'm not, I'm, that I'm definitely not, we, wasn't we, fun. We, <laughs> Thank you. No, we, we need to rest. An ally. And I'm going to uh, turn to the newcomer who just kind of like invited himself on this journey. Right. And say, well, obviously you're with us. So who are you? I am a you. Or... Imagine you have your face uncovered, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the hood's still up, just the face is uncovered. Okay. He's not fighting. So you could probably tell he's a you. <laughs> you probably yeah, didn't need to say might... it. Oh. That much was apparent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why does Nail follow? <laughs> I hunt the dark spot. And a black Aja dark sorcerer. Is as um, good a I would any. like I would like everyone from Tar Valen to give me a history check. That's uh Yeah, you probably wouldn't know what the black Aja is. I corrected myself. Like a dark sorcerer. <laughs> 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 oh wait, wrong, 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 wrong. Alicia. Sorry. Well, I'll, an intelligence save is it, it's fine too. Like that's that's totally acceptable for you. Um, it is because it has to do with why an Aiel. It has to do with the power, the one power, um, specifically Sidene. And because you understand, because you have been trained in war magic, and you understand how it is used. Um, you know that the only reason an Aiel would be alone in the Blight is if he was a channeler. And for those in the audience who don't know, little history lesson. 3,000 years ago during the War of Power, the Dark One corrupted Sidene, the male half of the true source, but all magic comes from. From then on, any man who wielded magic would inevitably go mad, kill everyone he loved, and then rot away and die. When an Aiel male discovers that he can channel, that he can use magic, he goes into the north, into the blight, to kill as many darkspawn as he can 
before he is consumed. Sunil and Evan, you do not know this. Kalista, you do. I'm going to take a slight step back and um, like kind of to position Evan between myself and this Aiel. And I'm going to say to him, um, how far into the madness have you gone? Do I feel her unease as she realizes that? You do. You feel as she looks at him, as, as he approaches, you feel just a slight sense of unease around him. I draw my sword. Oh, damn. All right. I don't Here attack, but I hold it we, ready. So there is a rule on my channel that if there is interparty conflict, you will never roll a die. Makes sense. Because I don't want an unlucky roll to ruin anybody's day. <laughs> if there is interparty conflict, it is absolutely role played, turn by turn. Evan has drawn his sword, Gahard. What will you do? He's he's not threatened by him drawing a sword at this point. <laughs> he knows he could he could probably put an arrow in him before he gets to him. <laughs> it won't stop him, but. <laughs> I'm going to, however, reach out and kind of touch. Sorry, he's right here, so I'm like touching. Him. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna touch Evan and just like kind of through our bond, essentially tell him to stop, like chill. It's okay. Fabulous. What is it? I can feel. What is your problem with him? What is your name? My name is Gahard. As long as you are with us, I need all cards on the table. You are a magic user. You can channel the one power, yes? Yes. Dun dun dun! Yeah, pretty much. Evan, like, <laughs> his stance gets even more firm. It's like, oh, shoot. Evan, darling, please. You have control. For now. If you begin to slip, I will not hesitate. Do you understand? I would expect nothing less when I said I. Good. I'll kind of relax a little bit into it now that everybody knows what's going on. And I'm just going to continue finishing up camp or um, if it is already done, um, I guess pull out some rations. Fabulous. And just FYI, if all of you in stream could keep track of your hit points, as they go down or up, as you, as they may, um, uh, that would be great if we have you can keep track extension. of that because yes. we've got a little overlay yep. on our thing that shows so the audience can actually check out your character sheets to see oh. how damaged you really are. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> it's, a lot. But for now, everybody's going to get to see the results of a long rest. Good. You make it through the evening without incident as you take very efficient watches with uh, with the three of you. I die, you get to rest in peace, obviously. Um, as your warder really only needs to sleep maybe once a week to remain effective, you know, but a little a little couple of hours nap definitely helps you. Um, and as soon as the sun comes up, you are ready to go for your next day in the blight. But it seems they're still not moving. I will relay that information. Uh, is there, has anyone, does anyone 
has anyone been here before? Is this a, uh, it, it's not that far north from the city I was staying in, so... No, the, the disturbing part of this is that the Blight has never moved this far south before. It is much further south than it should be. Um, you can see in the forest there are farmsteads that have not yet been totally destroyed by the Blight yet. Which means it's only been a few months that it's been around. So as we get up, I'm I'm going to look at Sunil and say, "You can still feel her. Feel her." That way, she hasn't moved. Either they're starting late, or more likely, they're waiting for pursuit. Yeah, they're most likely waiting for us. Or arrived at their destination. That is also uh, possible. We, if that is a possibility, we should assume they have help waiting. And be cautious. Always. Well then, let's go. So, right. um... Do you mount up? Do you yep. head out? Do within, you know, maybe a couple of miles or so, if I, if it's possible, kind of as it gets stronger, and then, so when, when, we're, when we're about a couple of miles away, I'll let everyone know, and maybe we'll go a bit more stealthily. Certainly. Yes, you may. Good call. Um, and everyone, if you want to click that long rest button on your sheets to gain back your spell slots and all of that, and your health, your hit points, all of that good stuff, feel free to do that, too. Exciting. And delightful. I'm very. Oh, right there. Um. Yay. So. Now. You head deeper into the blight. You can feel her getting closer, and it just. It warms your heart. She is no longer in an enormous amount of pain. It actually feels like she might be healed. But there is a greater and greater terror in her. She has gone from a panic into a soul-crushing fear for some reason. I ever felt that from her before? Never. I will look at... Uh, the rest of the party and say that she's... she's facing some great fear or terror. Uh, Callista said I what would cause a fear unlike I've never experienced through the link before. Give me an intelligence check. Me? Yeah. No, give me an arcana check. Yes, please, Callista. And give me me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm assuming. Did it go through? Yeah, 20. Ooh. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's so. Up. Magic user shows up. Before, um, before Hesper left, she had shared with a few of her colleagues her fears of what might be going on in the blight. She had delved into the archives of Tar Valen, the White Tower, and she had discovered, written almost 3,000 years ago, during the war that shaped the world, a ceremony 
a horrific ceremony. When you gather 13 Myrdral, the lieutenants, faceless, eyeless, that cause fear with their gaze alone. When you gather 13 of them and 13 dark Ayas Sedai, you can channel the one power through these Myrdral and against their will, you can convert a magic user to the dark. You can force them to become a servant of the dark one. She believed someone had discovered this. You know that. You can choose to share as much or as little of that as you would like. There is a possibility of something dark, something evil that is a lost magic, but it's never been confirmed. I, if it is what I think it is, we have need for haste. We need to get to her as soon as possible. So, let's go. (laughs) Yeah. All right. You head out. High hill silver. (laughs) As you move through the blight, um, I'm going to need... Since this is only your second day in the blight, I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from each of you with advantage. Gimme, gimme, gimme some brawls. Gimme, gimme. Um, just so, so you know, you can hold shift and then hit the button. It'll do advantage. Or you can hold control and hit it, and it will be disadvantage. Okay. Really? So. Oh, wait. No, you did tell me that, uh, Kyle. Oh. Yes. There is. Super fun. Hold All on, right. So I'm going to so, try Evan, that really quick. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Evan, you succeed. Sunil, you succeed. Um... Gahard, you succeed, and Callista, you succeed. Fabulous. Right. All right. So, um, you can feel and sometimes even see the mushrooms that seem to have the glowing patterns on their caps will occasionally release clouds of spores. Thankfully, none of them managed to harm you. Um, and let me say, Operative Peanut and Jerry, are you kidding me? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for following. You get a little wink from court on you. Sure do wink. And you can sense your Aya Sedai getting closer. As you had planned, would you like to enter the encampment with stealth? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. what what do we see first? Like, can we? Well, hold on just a moment. Oh. I don't want to just waltz into a camp not knowing. Ooh la la. Oh. You see oh, something for hell. really horrific. Oh, that's true. You may you may place your tokens at the southern end of the map. In front of you, you see poor Hesper, mousy, quiet, curious, and kind, laid out on the trunk of a fallen tree. Around her, 13 Mere drawl. Horrific lieutenants in the Dark One's armies. They move like snakes. 
and can step through shadows. To look at their face is to know fear, and every sword strike kill. Behind them, 13 Aes Sedai, channeling their power through the mere drawl, forcing this poor woman to serve the dark. Kalista, give me a perception check. Oh no. Oh, damn. Anybody want to help with some advantage? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can. There's channel oh, points you can mushroom, use. You can use mushroom. some. Yeah, you can use some bits. You can use some channel points. There's... Babe, give me a chance. There, someone got you. I got you. <laughs> Thank you, oh, Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah. Wait, give me, I would like I a better roll for you, please. I would yeah. like, I would Do prefer better. a better roll. This, yeah, Haley. You're making hey, the story yeah. hard to tell. If I had physical <laughs> dice, I would blow on them. Okay, one, two, three. Thirteen. Okay. okay. That's better. That's better. With a thirteen, you notice there's something odd about one of the Aes Sedai. You may give me an arcana check with advantage. There's one of them, there's something different. With a 16 arcana check, you realize that you can see the weaves coming from the mere drawl. This one. But normally you can tell, you can sense when someone even has the ability to weave magic. You can always see the weave. Whatever they are weaving, you can see it happening. But with this woman, nothing. And yet, it's happening. So it's blocked? You may give me another arcana check. This is, no, you can give me a history check. Mm. You have no idea how she is hiding her ability to channel. But you know that she is. It's not something you should be able to do. Are any of these 13, should I, including the one that we almost killed earlier? Uh, yes, she is there. She is up here at the very top. Um, so... Is there anything? <laughs> I, I will. Any look. questions? Do you have any other questions that you would like to ask? So she's at the center. Um, Hesper's in the center of this. Hesper is in the center. Okay. I know I'm going to pull out my bow and have that ready. Yeah, I look at Callista and say, "So if we kill one, they cannot complete. They cannot complete this ritual." That they is true. Fighting. Yeah. Yes, they all they need all thirteen of both the Aes Sedai and um the Midral. They need both of them. So we take out one. We stop this. But we take out one and they all come at us. Then I suggest uh you uh, attempt to see to our safety and I'll take out one. You see all of them concentrating. None of them have noticed you yet. Please. Yeah. Give me initiative. 
Combat has not yet started, but I would like initiative. All right, Evan. Okay, getting sassy with your 26 initiative. All right. I see you. I see you. Thank you for the bits, Danielle. Well, thank you, Han. I'm going to give you plus two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You need it. <laughs> Evan. Okay. You get 26. Um, oh, I'm a five. Yep. So seven. So seven. So seven. So you can be seven. Fabulous. <laughs> Good um, for me. Got hard is 18. Fabulous. Give me plus two. Got... I got 28. So Sunil and well, Evan. You can do plus two on anything you want, though. So. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'll say that. And I think you, we, I think, oh, I think you used your plus two. Someone used their plus two, but I think Dead Al earlier yeah, gave everyone plus two. You guys get to keep track two. of that. You... Yeah, I <laughs> used the I'm one that I I'm keeping track of a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. You no, guys keep good. track I'm, of that. I'm just trying to help <laughs> people keep track. All right. Fabulous. So. I'm going, I can say if we all attack at once we may be able to take them unaware and so doing if we all attack like one we may be able to take it down you all plan on dying as well ah i mean good question i'm i'm a dead man walking this would serve my purpose and bring me much toe but this is what you want not particularly. If I can kill Dark Spawn and Dark Friends, I am happy to do it. I don't want to lose you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sunil looks. Sunil looks at Evan and says, "You need to uh, take care of your green, and not throw your life away, young man." Ah, that's right. Mine, on the other hand is a willing price to rescue. That's you right. make sure the Hesper gets away. And you and me, my friend, and he looks at, uh, at Gahard, is a, uh, we'll show them how warriors die. I'll cover you with my bow. Are you sure? There's 26 so. of them and four of us. No, but... So. These are not odds to win. First of all, Daniel, thank you for all the bits. You have easily done a thousand bits, so you may choose an environmental effect. Will it be time? Will it be magic? Or will it be luck? Let me know, Daniel. Which one do you choose? I am 100% here for that name. Manathir and Army Wraiths. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Manathir and Army Wraiths. <laughs> Manathir Yes. Taishar Manathir. Taishar, where are you from? What? He said Taishar Manathirin. You're supposed to respond with Taishar wherever he happens to be from. from I don't know where Evan's from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where are you from, Evan? I'm from Amadisia. Oh, Taishar. Well, Taishar, sort of, Amadisia. <laughs> <laughs> not not yeah, super no, excited about the them. white folks. <laughs> yeah. They're not great. Magic. <laughs> All right. Okay. Magic. Because <laughs> I like this one. Because Danielle has like chosen magic. You're gonna get a little something there, Callista. You sure are. Gonna get a little something. Callista. What something? You have been, with your keen senses, 
as you have been writing, you recognize that these mushrooms are the same mushrooms as the ones that were growing all throughout the blight. You recognize that they cast spores. And you could feel them trying to invade you. Your immune systems are still strong enough that they couldn't just get at you. But you felt it. You knew what was going on. As a free action, once every round, you may use a tiny weave of air to tap a mushroom. Oh. And it will release a circle of spores. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Spam it. You may, you may do that as many times as you, on as many mushrooms as you choose. Do you the don't... mushrooms, are they only like once and done? Like if I tap one mushroom, then it's done? Generally, uh, mushrooms release spores all the time. You watch them releasing spores continually throughout your journeys. So now, you see all of these mushrooms around you. You have the ability to trigger them. All right. I'm going to say first. Well, first, first hold on. Let me give oh. you the rest of the information about this. No, I just want to do it now. OK. You you have this now. Thank you, Danielle, for that. Thank you, Danielle. Yay, 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 <laughs> um, And. You see that they are concentrating. Sunil, you feel the darkness growing in your eyes to die. You can feel it blooming like a dead flower, eating away at the light inside of her. You sense this happening. You know you have maybe two rounds to save her. And now, starting with Evan, you will have two rounds to save her. Evan, what do you do? All right. So, I'll look around at the people next to me. We need to take out one. So I will aim my then, bow. And then what? We take out one to stop the ceremony. And then they kill and her. And then death I'm... is better than turning. But agreed. If we could not have her be killed, that would be great. So Neil, you're going in, correct? So, so something about something about my channel it is never wise to make assumptions about anything on this channel so let's not assume what will happen when you kill one of them it might be mayhem they might murder her they might not you don't know yet so no, i will no, take uh, uh the 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 two of you and says um you what Right, so Neil looks at, looks at uh, the other Esedai and uh, the warder and says, um, uh, uh, rescue her. She is savable. Take her from this place. Keep her safe. I will make mm -hmm. sure they don't chase. As will I. Okay. Calista? You agree? We will save her, but please, Daniel, do not throw your life away. And, uh, as Neil just gets up and starts walking towards them. All right, so I can use double movement and rush. <laughs> um, you, you, you can if you would like to. I'm, I guess the idea is we run in, no. we grab her, and we run, and they attack, <laughs> and we run away. No. No, sneak attack from the bushes. 
Like, we just have to kill one of them. We don't have to, like, try and take them all yeah. on if we do it from the bushes and I can do the little mushroom thing. The heart thing. is like, I know what I would do, but he, didn't want to, he doesn't want to put these people in danger unnecessarily. And he's like, it, there, it, she's your friend. So he's like, like waiting with You don't have a like, lot of time. You I'll don't follow have a lot of time Sedai. for conversation. I'll grab my bow and I'll shoot the Aes Sedai, that, the black Aja that's closest to me. So this one right here. Yeah, and yes. if we're doing this all before combat, um, Gahard will do the same thing. He'll put, he'll put, he'll follow up with an arrow right, right after him. He's following the lead of. If you're both, seven. if you're both doing arrows, then Sunil, what are you planning on doing this round? So the only thing that Sunil would have suggested is that they had got to within sort of like charge range before they actually shot. Otherwise, uh, Snil's just going to die in the open. <laughs> um, that's okay, that's good, strategy. good strategy. No, good strategy. So, so move forward. Can we move forward the farthest we can get still in cover? Uh, yes, you can You can head directly behind these mushrooms if you would like. That'll work. And you still will have, you will still have cover. Yes. Do we use stealth? Kind of see. You are still. They are absolutely okay, okay. engrossed in what's going on. They are not literally. All their concentration is on this ceremony. So he's going to so, notch two arrows. All right. So what I want from you, one at a time, Evan. You are planning on doing, on shooting one arrow. Yes. Correct. Gahard, you are going to shoot two arrows. Yes. Yes. Sunil. Daniel is going to run in and uh, with Glaive out, will attempt to uh, hopefully finish off the uh, side that is still uh, has two large arrows sticking into it um, and will then attempt to draw attention away from uh, the three that are behind and move away. Uh, and hopefully we killed one and we'll move away towards the next one. So therefore, Fabulous. We'll look with her. Um, Callista, what are you planning on doing in the first round? Fireball. Can I? Yes, I would like to do fireball, <laughs> but um, can I use the air that I'm using to enhance the fireball to simultaneously smack one of the mushrooms? Ooh! Look at you being yeah. a smarty pants. You do it right here. That's perfect. Yeah, that's uh, what, what I'm thinking. What I will, what I will say, is Mushroom that fireball. You, you can utilize the air to ensure if you use a fireball to smack the mushroom, the mushroom will be that mushroom in particular will be destroyed. It's too much force. It'll just destroy it. Um, but the spores will be released. Is that the only mushroom that's like directly in the middle of? Yeah, it is. Frick. Um, would would okay. So if I drop the fireball just at the crux, like at that corner spot where they're all at, like right, 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 right here. There, can you see what I? You can't see it. Um, but yeah, where they're I, all coming right together right in that right section. Here. There yeah, like go. right, but like kind of farther away from the mushroom. So the impact of the fireball will reverberate outward and make the mushroom go, but not destroy the mushroom. Um, so you're hoping to do it like over here? I think more inside the circle. Like in, no, but I can't go inside. There's an the ace to die yeah. in the middle I know, the of the circle. On the inside. So yeah, so, so yeah, so a little you can bit. Do it. It's up to you. No, I don't want to kill Hesper. <laughs> <laughs> Shish. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like over there, but where do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, like the I'm absolutely, of the fireball I absolutely was say. And yes, I will say okay. you absolutely can. And you get inspiration for using those two in conjunction like that. Nice. Yes. So that's fun. I okay. like creative thought. So. So that's what I'm going to do. We are now going to enter a round of narrative combat. As I call your name, we don't need roles. You tell me exactly what happens. 
starting with Evan. Tell me. So, how about I go out, draw, fire straight into the back of the ice dice head, who's looking at the, the stuff. Don't know whether it hit the back of the head, but aiming for it. This is this is your combat. You you do not get to kill anything until I tell you they are dead. Of course. But it is up to you where this arrow lands and what happens. Okay. So yeah, straight into her back. I'll shoot the arrow. Then I will get ready a second arrow to then unleash when I can. Give me a little bit more. Tell me about this situation. You just launched this arrow from your bow. What happened to her when you did? When I shot, uh, arrow flies through the air, slams into her back. She arches backward, no longer connecting with the merge draw in front of her. So, oh, she um, is. Oh, she's still connected? She absolutely is. She's still connected. She's still connected. As the... As she pitches forward into the back of the Myrdral, the Myrdral doesn't move at all. You hear the one up here that doesn't seem to be channeling scream. If one of you dies, it will set this plan back years. You will do this now. Keep going and you see a weave appear out of nowhere, suddenly starting to block the backs of them. We are under attack, but we will succeed, sisters. Gahard, what do you do? You've heard them scream, you know they're aware of you. Gahard is going to lower his bow and look at, uh, s s sorry, how do you pronounce your name again one more time? Sunil. 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 And look and say, I'll slow them down, go get her. And he is going to reach out his hands and touch the, the Sidene, and he's going to hold back a little as as the he has to penetrate the blackness of Sidene in order to touch the true source and he is going to cast spike growth ah. right in here and try to get as many of these guys as he can so that Sunil can run by grab her and run out all right, and and that is technically a fifth level. How spell. big is spike growth? It is twenty foot radius. Twenty foot Ooh. radius. Nice. Yeah. That's rude. It's That's super, very rude. Super rude. So he's gonna you do are it. A rude person. Uh, so. Let me draw a little. He's gonna do it like here, so that Sunil can kind of come around this way like you, know, you can come like mm. you know that just doing all the circles all just the circles. making all the circles Here, I'll mine cause it's ugly. i'm like i'm not i'm not doing the circles <laughs> yeah so he's gonna try to get all eight of these if he can um if it's a circle you can it, it can definitely get uh yes you can get all of them perfect so um we will say because i don't want to draw another circle we will say that you get you them can, and it's you fabulous can, you, can't move it. you can just you have, have, it you have it dipped into the darkness of sidene for the first time in the campaign oh, it's gross. roll uh sorry what was it again what do I roll again? It's a wisdom save. Yep. I remember now. Can I feel that he's touched the darkness? 
13. No, you can't. Female no. female casters cannot sense anything having to do with Sidene, just like Sidene okay. can't sense anything having to do with Sidar. They can't see the weaves. They can't sense that the other people can channel anything like that. It's completely separate. 13. All right. You managed to hold on to yourself against the tide of sickening darkness that sits like a slick over the magic of Sidene. Like scummy water. Just... And as the spikes crawl up from the ground, you hear many of the women shriek in pain as their feet are penetrated by sharp spikes. The woman who is obviously leading them suddenly gasps. She couldn't sense that this was happening. Mm -hmm. She yells, there is a man channeling here. Beware. And with that, Sunil, tell me what happens next. Where is Hesper? Hesper is right here at the very center of the log. Hello there. Yep. Uh, so Sunil will uh, go 30 feet. Oh. So he's. That's crazy. <laughs> Sunil has haste now. What? Yay! Oh, <laughs> we like haste. That's nuts. What? <laughs> He's extra okay. fast for some reason. For three rounds. Well, I, I then I can't turn that down then, right? So I'll <laughs> use thirty feet. I'll use half my movement, so I'll use thirty feet of it to get to the front side of this ace die. Because the back side is covered by the air by the uh, the weave, but the front side I presume is not. And you get extra um, action. And I will uh yeah, um uh, attempt anyway to um you know, uh, redecorate her with a glaive. Um, <laughs> Your range. Uh, let me do a little It's nice I way to put it. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, like, there are, like, th she's very close. She's got an arrow in her back. And DM, correct me if I'm wrong, she's right next to this Myrdal, right? Yeah. She is. So there's, like, it's a, it's a larger target to hit, would you say? Um, It is. Yes, so, the mirror you know, is. Yeah, good. So, so, as in, like, but the two of them together, I couldn't really miss them, right? Um, you can try to hit them. What are you trying to do exactly? <laughs> why, why don't you tell I'm, me a good I'm just, story? I'm just being, I'm being entirely like I'm, I'm, uh, um, uh, no, I, I, in fact, what, what was going to happen is so, um, although, uh, um, oh, they might be restrained. Hold on, let me double check. Uh, I don't Ooh. think spike stones restrains. It just every five feet that oh, they move, it does damage to them. Yeah. So, yeah. so Gahad is um, uh, has sort of said, "Oh yeah, go and get her," and blah. But Sunil sort of much more conscious on the fact that the first thing that needs to happen is one of them needs to die, because there isn't enough time to go get her and get her out without in two rounds, right? It's just not a practical thing. So instead, he is going to use half his movement to get in front of. Uh, uh, the A side is protected from the back, and um, there will be a heavy stroke of the glaive, and then a the butt end of the glaive will also go into this sort of A side's chest, mm -hmm. and he will dump smites in at the same time as well. Uh, the tearing reel and the skin flares up as it does so, and as he also as he moves closer, his glaive sort of just expands out in both directions. Uh, as can you, to roll, you... Or? As no, not yet. We are still in narrative combat because it hasn't, because everyone else is still distracted. As you manage to land one blow, but as the second one is about to land, the sword of the Midral, without even looking at you, easily bats the next one away. You see the blade dripping with darkness. One cut from this, you will die. Oh, I forgot about that. Kalista. It's nuts. You see this happen. So she nuts. still stands. But is she is my... close to death. I still have my hasted action, right? You do? What would you like to do now? Can I 
push the Ace to die that's right next to the Mirrodal onto his blade. Oh, oh shit! shit. <laughs> yes, you're that's my badass. favorite now. Fuck you're yes, my favorite. Yes. yes. I would like you no, would like to more. describe to me <laughs> how you do that. So, as he swung down with his blade once and it hit, and he's come back with the other blow, and the block blow's been blocked, right? So it's like there, and he's looking at the, the blade of venom, and he sees the so there. He just pulls the blade along the, the, the edge of the, the, the this tearing grill. I mean, sees it, sees the, the clashes between these two weapons, and eventually as well, starts to uh, be impacted as well. But as he does so, he just gives a final push of force as the the black blade cuts into this Aes Sedai. <laughs> he parries the blade into her. I love it. You... You see, suddenly, the Mirdral turn to you. Oops. Oh, snap. Bite me. I want... <laughs> Tell me, there is such an immense panic in you. Can you fight it down? Um, let's see. Uh, I think that there was a moment previously where maybe it would have actually caused a shock or a concern or otherwise. Um, but Sunil's far as he's concerned, he's a dead man walking. He's got one job to do. So he's looking straight at the medal and it's like looking at his death, but that's okay. Because you have been trained to die for your AS to die. It even rhymes. The blade <laughs> it does. The blade slices through the arm of the AS to die. And you watch as in mere seconds black tendrils snake up her arms and you hear a scream from the hooded woman over here as the Aes Sedai falls to the ground convulsing though she stops when the poison reaches her heart the entire group looks to you you feel the darkness receding from your eyes to die as she fights off the Dark One's touch. And in that moment, as everyone is distracted by what you just did, a fireball explodes behind them. And the mushroom Chaos, bitch. Yeah. ignites, ooh, ooh, amplifying ooh. it and shooting spores everywhere. The woman yeah. in the cloak screams once again, though you see her and every mere drawl step away from the fireball like nothing happened. She says, grab her. Now we can still have 13. If she won't bend to magic, she'll bend to torture. Uh -oh. I'm going to give the four of you one hundred and twenty seconds to tell me how you save her. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, we have twenty seconds. Like like to converse and talk okay. to each other? No, nope, okay. not oh. to talk to each okay. other, to tell me the story of what you do. This is when you collaborate. Are you ready? <laughs> Sorry. Point of question. Do we have two minutes to collaborate and then tell you what we're doing? Or no. Or we have two minutes to tell you what we're doing? You have, tw you have two minutes right now because I'm giving you essentially... Like, you have six seconds to make this happen. It's going to be one round, which means you have two minutes to make it happen in real time. Are you ready? 
not even remotely, but let's go. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Let me know when to start. The, the pressure is on. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Okay, so Neil's got to run in and grab her. Yeah. So, yeah, so Neil's gonna, can, can run in. That's enough space for you to run in and grab her, right? Yep, I've got 60 feet of movement, so I can run in. Okay. And I can run out again. I will be right back next to this Murdell, but I can then dash. And then I've got a hasted dash. All right. And the spike ready? will keep the closest ones away from you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'll, I'll right. to uh, distract half of them. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Two minutes so, on the clock. Sorry, sorry, one more thing. Oh we, god we, damn we it. All, no. We all have one <laughs> we all have one like round like one round action to do something. We each have to tell you our own thing. Okay. Leave it on the ground, honey. There is you are telling me an amazing story in two minutes about saving this Aya Sedai. You have earned this because of the fabulous stories that you have told so far. Don't waste it. Two minutes. Starting now. Go. Hey. So as this blade is cut into this last day of Sedai, Sunil just runs as fast forward as he can get, heading straight for uh, Hesper. Um, he leaves himself as he's just going straight for it, and then he's going to grab her and then go straight back to Hesper. Tell me how you dodge the swords of the Mirdral that are suddenly upon you. It is, I, it is a, sorry, go ahead. Haley. Can I cast, can I move forward? Um, you can 30, do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to move what forward. You do. I'm going to move forward um, far enough that I can um, be within range, cast Mage Hand to block the um, <laughs> the Midral and the Aes Sedai so that they can't get to Sunil. You send out weaves of air to block those yeah, that, swords. I love it. Sorry, yes, I'm sending out weaves of air so it creates like an air shield right there for him so that he can't, he's in, he's semi-protected in that moment. You see a dozen weaves coming at you, trying to block that weave. What do you do? And does anybody help her? Yeah, Geralt is going to shoot a wave of of air and, and, and <laughs> reinforce it and push, push all of these guys back so that they're even further away from the Aes Sedai so that the opening is even greater. As you focus your energy that none of them can see, pushing them back, the other Aes Sedai focus on Kalista, trying to stop her. Kalista, how do you evade them? As a reaction, can I raise my shield? At the same time? Do you raise your shield? Yes. yes. Shit. Yes. Don't think about the character sheet. Just tell the story. Okay, okay. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to think about. Um, it's a transition. But you can do it. This is hard. It is. Um, okay, it. so... I believe in you. So I'm going to siphon... Knowing that that reinforcement is there, I'm going to siphon some of the air back to myself... So it makes kind of a sweeping motion and then comes up directly in front of me so that it's um, shielding both myself and still giving semi-protection <laughs> to Sunil. Um, you have just learned a new spell. You can now counter spell. You certainly can. You have learned nice. the weave. You take some of their weave and you use it to weave your own shield. Nice. That is what you have done oh, in you, this moment. And you have haste and, now. Uh, <laughs> Evan. I love yes. it. <laughs> there is a wave of air pushing them back into the spores. You are siphoning the energy from these evil Aes Sedai. Uh, Sunil is sprinting, dodging these fabulous swords, getting his Aes Sedai. Tell me. Evan, what are you doing to help? You're doing this. So Evan rubs, runs up using his speed. I got double speed. They're all looking at him and being blocked by this air. So I will take my sword and I'm just going to run it along their backs. 
<laughs> as they're looking in the direction. As these Aes Sedai see the sword coming with the mirror all distracted, they stop going after Haley, and all of them attempt to protect their own backs. Tell me, have you gotten Hesper yet, Sunil? I have just reached Hesper, and you can see that there's you know, people that are, or Myrdals and Aes Sedai that are starting to move, but they've been pushed backwards by, by sort of Haley's gust of wind, and also the uh, Gahar's sort of like force that's pushed them out. Um, uh, you feel as Hesper's eyes roll back forward, as she regains consciousness, you feel an intense rage building up oh. inside you as she experiences it too. You feel something from her you've never felt before. Destruction. The desire oh. to kill everything around her. You watch as the wood of the tree suddenly splinters underneath her. Yes. Haley, you watch these incredibly complex weaves of air and earth as she creates stakes that slam into every mirror drawl in front of her. And her eyes flutter back in her head as she loses consciousness. What do you do, Sunil? I, I've sweeped her up. I've got her sort of like, you know, uh, in a, uh, in a carriage, not like a princess carriage, over my shoulder. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the, the glaive is out. I'm holding it kind of one-handed-ish. And I'm just, again, just running as fast as I can. I'm pounding. And I'm kind of basically going um, uh, uh, in a direction over this way. So down towards the, 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 the lower left-hand side. Um, with the intention of anyone that chases after me, um, well, actually, hmm, I'm going to come around, and the my goal is to actually leave her with Evan and with uh, Callista. As and, um, you head go. back down, you watch as the entire group in front of you is splintering. The Mirdral do not feel pain, but they have now massive chunks of wood sticking out of their chest. You have... Isle arrows firing into them. Their leader say, looks yeah. around and says, ah, Retreat. I need the rest of you. The plan fails if I don't have you. Leave now. And she points to several of the Myrdral and says, Kill them all. Haley, you, your warder, and Sunil are all in front of this wall of mushrooms. What do you do now? I gotta move myself. Um, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm there. I... I want to... Well, we're all out of... We're all right there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would have moved up Can too. I do can I do another I want to do another fireball well, yeah, or burning hands maybe, but fire right at the ones right in front of us. Tell me how that happens. Tell me what you do. So as soon as Sunil and Hesper are like out of range from what I'm thinking I want to do, I'm going to I grab the the weave and I form it into a, a cone and send it directly forward to the um, Aes Sedai and the Myrdral that are in front of us to stop them and kill them and all of that jazz. So you see like this sudden shot directly out of fire in a 15 foot cone. That's Fabulous. not as hot as the fireball, but it's still... The sparks blind the people in front of you as their clothes are set ablaze. Do you want to stay where you are? <laughs> yes. All right. No, no. I want to take a little, a couple steps back. You... As he does that, though, 
Evan is going to put his sword out so it catches some of the flame ah. and heats it and then walk forward and slice. So right as the fire finishes, the hot sword cuts. Yes. <laughs> cauterize the wound. Fabulous. Right there. Now, give me, everybody give me an intelligence check. This is your first check. Oh, intelligence? Intelligence. <laughs> All right. Ooh, uh, I'm, I'm getting it. 16. I got a two. The hard, Kalista, and Sunil. You are all very aware that even with only a few Mirdral, you are all dead if you attempt to face them. You will absolutely die. There is no question. I'm what do you want to do? <laughs> is there a feasible way of us outrunning them. Well, the spike grows there, well, so we run... Well, let us say. What if do we, we have? Let's look at our resources. We got horses. Well, You've got horses. horses. Yeah, the horses are back a little bit, but if we get past the mushroom cloud, or the mushrooms, I can activate them with the air, and then send the spores using the air directly back onto the Mirdral. Would you like to do that? I yeah. would like to do that. Ooh. As long as we're all out of the that line of big mushrooms. I mean, you're the only time. one who's yeah. in that blood rage and doesn't realize he's about to die. I'm going to yell at Evan and be like, Evan! Get back! <laughs> Get back here now! Right now! Young man! <laughs> you all head straight back through the mushrooms. Haley. Tell me, how do you do it? Give me a beautiful moment. So I'm gonna move down. So as soon as, as soon as like the second Evan and I are through and everyone is through, I take the weave and I, it's almost like a rising um, tornado coming from ah. the, the area. And it makes like a, a giant swirl and you've got the the pieces of the wood and the the flecks of blood from the bodies and little pieces of things that might still be on fire coming together and then almost like a uh like a wave it just goes from one to the next of the mushrooms but coming up and over so that the, when the spores are released they go straight back onto the mirdral <laughs> the Mirdral, assaulted by these spores, normally would not be bothered by them, but in such quantities, you watch as the spores start taking root all over their oh, face. Their faces start turning black. <laughs> you see fungi starting to grow out of their eyeless heads as they tear at them over and over and over again. The Mirdral retreat as you race to your horses. You have succeeded. Yes. And no one died. Congratulations, adventurers. You spend a few days heading back through the blight to your tavern. But your Aes Sedai is safe. Does Hesper ever wake up? She does wake up, but that is a tale oh. for another day. <laughs> and with that, we shall end oh. our session today. There we go. Yeah. Oh my Thank God. you. I Thank imagine you. the clip that chastises Evan. I'm watching like nobody's business. Thank you so so much to everybody for being here. Thank you so much to Ramji from Fourth Culture. Give yeah, your you. give yeah. your bona fides, please. Get them, get them. Let them know. Uh, yeah, so you definitely come stop by. Uh, it's probably about 6 a.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time or about sort of 4 a.m. in uh, on the West Coast, but it's about 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. in fact in Singapore when we play uh, on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash The Fourth Culture or YouTube if you search for The Fourth Culture or you get a t4c.online 
and you can get it. It's the fourth culture. Anyway, uh, uh, that's that's what we do. We play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Vampire. We do other random stuff. Come hang out. We're part of this amazing stream team. I've had a blast. Thank you so much for letting me play today. It was a lot of fun. Oh. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming. It's rad. Awesome. Thank you. You were absolutely oh, delightful. So good. You are fabulous. When you said Thank that you thing about here. like dialect warriors, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't care if I'm making a new character. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> if you would like to go visit the fourth culture, please go follow. Just put up their links. Go follow them on Twitch. Go check out all of their stuff on YouTube. It is glorious. And there's a whole bunch of singing, which makes yeah. me so happy. Awesome. I love it. Party of Two RPG, tell me all about you. Yeah, so me and Haley are Party of Two RPG. Uh, you can ca- check us out on Twitch at twitch.com slash Party of Two RPG. We play Pathfinder 2nd Edition with just the two of us. So it's a two-person campaign, one GM and one player. Uh, and it is That's a awesome. long campaign. We do something interesting where we actually switch off who GMs. So we have different seasons where each of us take part of the story. And we are about to start a new season on this upcoming Tuesday. That's so cool. At- Yay! I mean, that's that's what real love is. I mean, just... Yeah, yeah. we just... So we've got their link up there. Go ahead. Go hit that link. Go follow them on Twitch. They are fabulous. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if Ramji joins us again, I can certainly, we can certainly figure it out. Now, Haley and I have done duets also. We have. So, <laughs> so I would be totally happy if we had a musical episode. I'm 100% down for that. But definitely go check them out. There is their link tree for Party of Two. Check them out on their YouTube. Check them out on Twitter. Check out their website. They are glorious, as you have seen. They are absolutely delightful. We have Lando. Hey, yep. And I'm here. This is my home base. So, <laughs> love it. Lando does all of our fabulous tech stuff, and we love him yep. for it. So, come and say hi to him yeah. when you're back here. And our sponsor was Souls Rolls. We oh. adore him. He, is he made awesome. a whole bunch of fabulous weapons, items, and feats that you saw today, including that hair and marked sword and that color changing cloak. Absolutely glorious. We love it. Absolutely. Um, definitely go check him out over at his webpage. He does amazing coaching sessions for people, helping them to organize both their lives and their dreams. Finding that path, a legitimate path that works for you to actually achieve the goals that you want. It's very inexpensive and he in fact has free slots for people who are in disadvantaged communities so that he can help lift them out of those disadvantaged communities. So definitely go say hi to him. Go check out his website, his Twitter, all of that good stuff. Thank you, thank you so much for the hype train and all of the support yeah. that you showed us today. You thank are you all so much. Amazing. I do want to say we did hit our follower goal, so we're going to be updating that. Thank you. We hit yes! 222. That's insane. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Makes me so happy. Now, let me know. Are you all ready to raid? Let's do it. Are you ready to raid? Because I'm ready to raid. Let's do it. I think we are going to go hit one of our stream team partners, Chasing Tales RPG. They are glorious doing some D&D today. It's going to be fabulous. Remember, chaotic, reach all the the contest. What? Oh, we do need to do it. Thank you, chaotic. I'm like, Gendo, I'm just going to keep it. Shut up. I hate all you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you. Uh, We are going to repick. And let me see what the the computers. It's calculating. It is calculating. All right. And is Mike 99 here? Do we have a Mike 99? Any Mike 99? Going to give you just a minute to come and say hey. 
pick up your prize. I don't see my 99 in chat, but it could be a different user. It could be, I don't know if it's taken <laughs> it from Twitter. Please pick up the white phone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mike 99. Mike 99. To customer service, please. There's right, a child so here. Mile four. <laughs> All right. If we didn't get it that time, you know what? What we're going to do. I'm going to say. Vote, chat. The people that you can vote for are anyone that donated any bits or subs today you let me know who should get this who has been supportive of us and therefore we are going to support them we will support your habit of D, D books that's right so we've got danielle 359 can certainly have that she is glorious chaotic yes, platypus is. is one Glorious Disaster is one. Ramji here is one of them. No, 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 no. She gave <laughs> someone in the audience. No, no, or Gamer. Fun. All right, Chaotic Platypus. Oh, Chaotic. I already uh, pre-ordered. I... <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Sorry. No. I did re-pick. We'll re we, we can re-pick again. We can try it again. Um, Coldic Steel Skin. Do we have a Coldic Steel Skin here? Well, we've got a vote for Dan Al. Oh, we're do I thought Does we were anybody... doing like a vote vote. Yeah, I vote for Dan Al. Or oh, we were vote voting too. I was waiting for an actual like yeah. thing. To oh vote. no, I can absolutely do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lando, I'm I'm going with Dan Al too. Can I vote? <laughs> Is it okay if I vote? Yeah, everybody can vote. If you are logged in in the chat, anybody can vote. So yes, we are gonna do a fabulous new vote. A new poll here is what we're gonna do. Sorry, kids. I'm like, no, all good. Who no. gets the dragons? Is the poll? Is it Daniel? Is it Core Gamer? Uh, is it Romji said no, and uh, and Chaotic Platypus said no. Um, Lando, can you go back through and let me know? Because I can't while I'm doing the poll. <laughs> I'll let you there know. is. Oh, who else? Yeah. Who yeah. else is available? Who has donated anything today? Um, Danielle, I, I think, is saying poor gamer. <laughs> well, she would. She would. She would. Because she's this. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, Daniel gave me a rare item. <laughs> it's all right, Lando. Focus, please. <laughs> um, I as far back as I can go. That's 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 it. All right, we're gonna start that poll there. Then, that's right. Let's see who's gonna get it. Who's gonna get it? I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see who's gonna get it because they all deserve it because they're fabulous. They make me happy. Again, thank you all for being here so much. It really just, the fact that you want to be here, um, just, it, it brightens my heart so much. It makes me so happy. So, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me see. New Classic Me, Mel. New Classic Mel has followed. I'm not sure why they can't see the poll. All right. It looks like Daniel. Um, Yay! Hey! What I will do, Daniel. Oh my God. <laughs> that is. I may or may not put, put a lot of uh, channel yeah, points like into the vote. I channel points in there for Daniel. <laughs> I think I think one of them, the other one was Danny. Daniel, whisper to me, whisper to me either your your Discord or your email address, and I will send you the code for the D and D Beyond download. If you would like to give it to someone else as a gift because you are generous and delightful, you should feel free to do that. But it is 
Yours, my dear. Thank you. And now, Ray. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Remember, when we raid, we tell the new people what Play Nerd Allies is bringing to the potluck. I am going to be bringing some roast mirror drawl. I sure oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. With uh, with sautéed mushrooms. Yes. Oh. Yes, yeah. indeed. Oh mm. my god. The faceless part is the best part. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>